Did you, uh, track down Kimball's father? Ah, Richard Fields, forgotten film star of yesteryear. Yeah, I found him. Alive, I take it? If what you can call what he's doing living. Why? Is he ill? Ill? Yes, he's definitely sick. I mean it, Dimitri. After hello, it didn't take me five minutes to figure out that Kendall should forget all about meeting Daddy Dearest. I'm very serious. This is one reunion that should definitely not happen. Well, I've reviewed your statements and weighed the evidence very carefully. There will be several charges. Obstruction of justice for both of you. And you'll be named an accessory. Accessory to what? Second degree murder. Second degree murder? You gotta be out of your ever loving mind. Well, the jury won't think so when they see the evidence. Evidence? You got nothing but circumstantial squat here. I understand that you're reading for the law under Mr. Montgomery's tutelage. Had you done your homework, you would know this is an open and shut case. I have sufficient evidence to nail Miss Banning and her accomplice on all counts and put them both away for a very long time. Oh, that's bull. You'll never make the charges stick, and as far as you're concerned, you think about throwing the book at them? Remember, you gotta get past me first. Ruthie, here, you got room for another one of my jalapeno cheese buns with my pickled cat no, butter? No, no, thanks. I think I'm just gonna play it safe, yeah. Well, like... okay. Shoot yourself. <laughs> Ladies. Oh! Pull up a chair. You're just in time to treat yourselves to some of the best of the Southwest. Oh, thanks. I already I had lunch. Uh, 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 Jamie's upstairs with Petra? Mm-hmm. He's getting his little duds on, getting ready for an outing. Yeah. I've been talking up the zoo to Petey, and since uh, Jamie's got such a thing for pachyderms, I figured we'd just make an afternoon of it, give you and Tad a chance to kind of remember what it's like to spend a little time alone. You see, mothers-in-law do come in handy sometimes. Well, I will admit I would love some quiet time alone with my husband. Well, then, why don't you just get on the horn and tell that Mr. Tad Martin to hi his honey home? Well, he has an appointment with somebody this afternoon. I, I don't know who it's with. I actually left messages all over town, and Tad seems nowhere to be found. He's not Ted. He's Tad. I can tell. Gee, sweetie. Me, partner. It's Ted. Prove it. Prove it how? We uh, both got the same face, that's all. But don't worry, it's an easy mistake to make, especially uh, with the suit. People do it all the time. Even your mom. Mom said you're not coming over anymore, so why are you here? <laughs> children. Brought to you by Mr. Clean Glass and Surface Spray. He cleans glass to a streak-free shine. Well, now, Brooke, honey, I mean, you know, Ted, he cuts a wide girth through the populace of Pine Valley. I wouldn't go standing any alarms if I was you. <laughs> I'm not. I mean, you know, schedules are to Ted what oil is to water. He's got to be out there mixing it up with the customers, giving them Folks, what they hanker for. You know, that personal Thaddeus Martin touch. That's our boy. I mean, he has a great head for business if you just don't try to pin him down. I'm not worried, really. You don't sound like you mean that. I don't know what I mean. <laughs> it's just that Tad and, uh, and I haven't had any time together since he came back 
from Napa, you know? It's been my work, his work, my life. <laughs> we just haven't gotten back on the mummy, daddy, Jamie track yet. That's... Well, I think that this little mini safari this afternoon, you know, getting the young guns out from underfoot is going to give you and Tad exactly what you need to put the sparks back in your plugs and keep your motors perfect. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe, you know, by the time Jamie is feeding peanuts to the elephants, my errant husband will have returned. Oh, the health club, you know, I didn't call there. Um... Um, I'm just going to make the phone call upstairs. I'll see you later. Okie dokie, honey. I will explain what Ted is doing here a little later, okay, sweetheart? You have to get out of your clothes, okay? You've gotten all muddy. Huh? I'm sorry I spooked you, May. Well, you're not the same. Well, I guess I'm having one of those days, you know, I just feel kind of down. You ever feel like that? Yeah. Well, I'm still the same guy that fixed your tire swing. So how's that not holding up, huh? You remember. Of course he remembers, sweetheart. So why don't you go on upstairs and uh, and get these dirty clothes off, okay? Ms. Anderson's waiting for you. I'm glad you're back. So am I. Mission accomplished. Remembering the tire swing was pretty good. You're the one that told me Ted fixed it. Nothing like lying to your kid, is there? I didn't have any choice. You didn't have any choice. Anyway, it's done. It's no, done. Believe me, it's not done. Take it from me. Lies have a way of dogging you. It's not. It's, it's not you, okay? It's totally yeah, my no, fault. Don't I was start selfish to ask you to come yourself, here. Okay, it's my fault. It's my fault for wanting you so bad. I'd be willing to flat out lie to a little boy. Everybody's miserable because I can't make a choice. It's ridiculous. Dixie, I've got to come to some kind of decision, one way or the other. Well, you don't have to do it now. Look, this is just the wrong, you know, time. This is maybe the wrong place for us to be meeting like this. You know, maybe we should meet someplace else. You know, just you and me, we could go away somewhere. We could just be quiet. Like it was in Napa. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? What's going on with you, Dill? Huh? The second degree murder charge stuck in your craw? Murder conviction gets you more votes comes election day, is that it? Before the polls close, let's talk self-defense. <laughs> what are you talking about? None of the evidence supports it. What are you, deaf? The evidence screams for self-defense. Take notes. Number one, Denny Benton has a history of assaulting women. Mm -hmm. Instead of rolling over and getting dead, she fights the sucker off. All right, then what does she do? Hmm? She dial 911? She phoned for the police, she phoned for an ambulance? No. She takes off with her legal counsel slash lover. They hide the corpse, and then when the police close in, they flee state lines. Now, why run? Hmm? Why hide the body? Self-defense. They weren't fleeing, they were eloping. In return for a guilty plea, I'll arrange for conjugal visits. Stuff your favors, what you got is strictly circumstance. <laughs> I can bring in a murder, too, on motive alone. If you'll examine Miss Banning's statement, she claims that her ex-husband had been blackmailing her. Miss Banning continues to say in her statement that she's not going to take it anymore. She's not going to cave in. And as far as she's concerned, Denny can go screaming to the cops, but the big bucks are going to stop then and there. Well, unfortunately, he ran into a bookend before he got to the precinct. No, he freaked out when Laurel told him there was no more dinero. Look, he tried to strangle her. What is she supposed to do, let him? But crying out loud, she confessed everything to me. No holds barred. Well, you, you, she does that, you think she's, she's guilty? Yeah. She felt the noose tightening. She wanted to plea bargain. What about Montgomery? He's a lawyer. He knows the scene. He knows how bad this looks. Look, I admit, them playing hide-and-seek with the body, that was dumb. <laughs> but you think they're dumb enough to go singing their little heads off if they think they're gonna be facing a murder rap? No. It's because there's no crime. Ergo, he's not an accomplice. Ergo, there's no obstruction of justice. It's self-defense. Well, that's for a jury to decide, isn't it? Look, Dylan, these people are your friends, okay? Jack's the big guy in town, and you're his clone wannabe. 
Maybe that's why you seem more like their defense attorney. Because any resemblance between you and Cobb depends entirely on which side you're on. So on that creepy note, I got out of there and ran as fast as my little legs would carry me. Wow, it was a mistake for me to let you go out there alone. No, it was my call. Just who would have thunk that the old boy would still have so much low life in him? Why should it be a surprise? He raped Erica. I know. I was just hoping that I could report back to Kendall that her father's been completely reformed. Yeah, people don't change that much. Yeah, well, maybe I could just trim it a little around the edges and tell Kendall that Daddy Dearest dropped off the face of the earth and is nowhere to be found. That would still leave her questions unanswered. In the long run, it's better that Kendall hear the truth. Yeah, but nobody wants to hear that their father is a pervert or a louse. The sooner Kendall learns that her father's still as bad or maybe even worse than anyone has painted him before, the sooner she can move on with her life. Real life. Real life. I'll take the cartoon any day. Well, this is the second time I've caught you abusing that riding crop. What did the poor thing ever do to you? I was pretending it was you. Don't tell me you're still angry with me just because I guessed a little secret about Dimitri. I'm angry, yes, because you guessed wrong. Accusing me of some schoolgirl crush. I was merely, as the Americans say, calling it the way I saw it. Then you'd better have your eyes checked because there was nothing there to see. Bad enough, you jumped to all the wrong conclusions, but you had a bored Dimitri with it? Oh, he wasn't bored, I can assure you. No, he was probably laughing his head off. How dare you, Anton? How dare you spew your ridiculous opinions to him? Dimitri overheard us arguing in here, and he asked me what it was all about. So I told him, that's all. Why stop there? Why not call Erica in Seattle? I'm sure she'd just be thrilled to know that I have designs on her husband. Okay, no, it was not my intention to create a problem for you, really. Problem? It's no problem. So, so what if I've slaved to establish a relationship with my mother and her husband? I mean, who are they to me anyway? Only the family that I've always dreamed of having. Easy come, easy go. I can always find another set of parental units and bond with them now, can't I? Kendall, I'm sorry. I, I guess I wasn't using my head. You've got that right. And here's another flash for you. I do love Dimitri. The same way that I love Erica. And the same way that I love my Uncle Edmund. They took me, a total stranger, into their lives. And oh, okay, maybe it's been slow, but we're finally starting to come together as a family. So maybe you can understand why the last thing that any of us need is you misinterpreting my feelings and then spreading the gospel according to Anton. You know what? You're right. I was way out of line. I deeply regret any trouble I've caused. It's just that... No one understands. No one understands what? Staying in this house is the most important thing to me. I am not about to let anything or anyone stand between me and what is rightfully mine. Dixie Napa feels like a dream. We're here, we're home. We're in Pine Valley. Getting back what we had is going to be tough, if not impossible. Don't say that. You saw what just happened with Junior. Well, this was just bad timing, okay? I, I just really want to be with you again. Just one more time. Where? New York. New York? Yeah. We could, um, we could just go to a hotel, check in somewhere, sign in as... Mr. and Mrs. Is, I don't know, whatever. whatever. And close all the doors and close all the windows and just spend the whole day in bed. Wouldn't that be heaven? A slice of it anyway. Just do it. I gotta go. Before Junior comes back down, I don't think I'm up for a repeat performance. No, you are not. But call me. As soon as I can.
Bye. Ask any cop, judge, lawyer in this burg, and they'll tell you the same thing. Montgomery is a straight-up kind of guy. He gave me the straight goods on how Benton bought it, and then I buy it. Why? One, because the evidence supports it. And two, because he didn't have to say a freaking thing. The poor slob is like me. He believes the truth will out and justice will prevail. Oh, no, I believe in the system as much as anyone. As to your story that Mr. Montgomery and Miss Banning made a full confession prior to their arrest, Detective Fry. Did Detective Dillon apprise you of this 11th hour confession? No, sir. Oh. Officer Reed? No, sir. Officer... Cannon, sir. No, sir. Oh. Did he tell you of the prisoner's intent to surrender themselves before they were arrested? No, sir. No. No, sir. Oh. Well, it looks like we've just got your word on those particulars, Dillon. Uh-huh. What's wrong with my word? Well, until you can learn to tell the difference between your duty and your loyalty, you'd best keep it to yourself. The charges stand. I'm gonna dog you on this, Tanner. Jack and Laurel are entitled to due processes, and I'm gonna see that they get it. Oh, no, no, they will have their day in court. You have my word on that. And they will get exactly what they deserve. The guy has the whole case sewn up before the arraignment. But you argued him point for point. You did good. You're going to make one hell of an attorney one day. Uh. Thanks, Trevor. <clears throat> you didn't have to do that. No, I did. Any friend would have done that. Thanks. I'm not bailing out on you guys. Sorry, kids, but uh, the party's over. Do me a favor. Don't enjoy yeah, this just, so much. Just, just hang on a second, please. It's going to be okay. I believe you. I love you. What are you bucking for an early retirement? I'm not afraid of Tanner. You were way out of line with him, Trevor. Oh, is that right? That's right. It's the DA's job to call the charges the way he sees them. If his grandma had wheels, he'd call her a trolley car. The charges aren't going to stick. Yeah, from where I sit, though, Jack and Laurel are guilty as sin. And when did my little brother get named judge and jury? When your partner turned out to be a criminal. Well, have you ever heard of the concept innocent until proven guilty? Oh, please, Livy, don't tell me you believe that cock and bull story that Laurel and Jack cooked up. Word for word. I'm with Trevor on this one. Well, excuse me if I don't buy into your admiration society. We'll see where it gets you when the jury brings in its guilty verdict. When pigs fly... What has gotten into him? Never mind, we got work to do. Give me the uh, file on the late, unlamented Denny Benton. I want every shred of paper. It's all here, Trevor. There's something here. There's something here that'll cinch our case. I know it when I see it. I'll know it when I see it. Well, hello, hello. He was different that night. There was this wild look in his eyes. Where is Benton's toxicology report? Well, the official cause of death was head trauma, so no one paid much attention to the toxicology report. Well, isn't that dandy? We wouldn't want to get brain strained now, would we, Cannon? Well, Benton died by a bookend. You ever heard the saying, blood will tell? Maybe Danny Benton's corpuscles have something to say to Papa. Are you and Ted gonna get married? No. Come on in here and sit down. I want to talk to you. Ted and I just, um, were agreeing to disagree. That's all. Well, how come you were kissing? Well, do you remember when you got into that big fight with Jimmy on the playground and uh, you shook hands to make up? That's all that kiss was about. It was sort of, um, you know, a kiss to show that there's no bad feelings. That's all. I'm sorry if it got your hopes up about, you know, me and Ted. Well, 
At least it wasn't Tad. That would have been Barfy. Oh, well, there's your uh, car. Go. That's probably Ms. Anderson. You hurry up now and stay out of the mud. Hey! Hey, Brian. Hey! See ya? <laughs> hey, Dixie. I forgot the batteries of Junior's car when I dropped it off before. Dixie, are you all right? Just a little overwhelmed, that's all. Well, what have I done to deserve this? What? Well, my husband home in the middle of the afternoon. Uh, Opal took the kids to the zoo, you know, on the off chance that maybe you and I could have some time alone together. I, I left messages at the office. I, I, I just didn't want to play telephone tag all day, you know. I, I didn't want this lovely, empty house to go to waste. So where were you? I, uh... <clears throat> I had a, a meeting outside the office. Oh. Well, that's okay. You know, you're taking care of business. I'm, I obviously don't clear my calendar with you. I think that the main thing is, is that you're here. And, and we're alone. I can't do this. What? Lie. I, I can't lie to you. I didn't have a meeting this afternoon. Did something come up? Yeah. Dixie. Dixie came up. She, uh... I was with her. All My Children will be back in session right after this. You were with Dixie? Yeah, she, um, called me at the office and asked if we could get together <coughs> at her house. She, uh, she's been having a rough time since Listen, we got back. You, you don't owe me any explanations, all right? You don't. And I, I don't want to be one of these wives who is always keeping tabs on their husbands. You're not, you don't sound like that at all. No, no, you didn't see me five minutes ago. I'm here and I'm pacing like some caged tiger. I wish I could chalk it up to the fact, you know, that it's work or I have a migraine or, you know, whatever. But it's not. It's my problem. You don't have a problem. You're fine. You're, Listen, you're better than that. You're the please. best. Hear me out, okay? I haven't been myself lately, and I'm sure you've noticed that. I haven't been myself since... since you came back from Napa, and I told you what almost happened with... With Ed, on, at Willow Lake. Don't torture yourself with that. Okay, it's I not, all right. No, about... it's not about Edmund, all right? It isn't. Because that's over and that's done with. It's. It's that I just. I had to lay my guilty conscience on you. And I didn't even give you any warning. I understood. You didn't understand. You just accepted it because I didn't give you any choice. I did it because I just, I wanted to clear the air. I thought if I did that, that we could go forward. But what seems to have happened is it's become something between us. And so I was waiting for, you know, an afternoon, you know, something special where we could be together, where we could talk. Because I just, I have to say this. Okay. What? I miss you. And I miss us. And I love you and Jamie so much. And I, I just, I just want to get back to where we were before I had to open my big mouth and ruin everything. That love and that passion. You know, I, I don't want that to go away. I want us to have, you know, the vows that we made, the commitment to be a family. I, I want to be with you, and I want you to be with me like we were before. I want that. I mean, we were happy. 
weren't we? Wow. Nobody can accuse me of good timing. Here you are trying to save our marriage, and I, I walk in and start lying to you. It's, listen, that's really all right. I understand about the situation with Dixie. I know it's complicated. I had lunch with Ted this afternoon. You and Ted? I went to the office. You know, I was looking for you, and Ted was there. And, you know, he told me that he had proposed to Dixie, and she turned him down. And... Anyway, I, you know, I know they were so close before all this happened in California. I know she must be upset by this. So it's only natural that, you know, you know the whole situation better than anybody that she would call you for comfort. So I was lying to my own son. Just add guilt and stir. Anyway, no harm was done. You know, he believed that Tad was Ted. Look, Dixie, when the low road's the only one that's open, sometimes you have to take it. Should have seen Tad. I mean, you think I feel guilty. He was... Ugh. You know, Tad seems to be the guy that's calling all the shots around here. It's not too easy for me to get up uh, some sympathy for him, you know? He doesn't enjoy this any more than I do. This, this deception and all these playing, all these games. Well, then he shouldn't be playing games. Look, this is very difficult for him, all right? I know that he loves me and... Uh, you know, he loves Brooke, too. His son is involved in this whole thing. But, you know, it's like his whole future hangs in the balance. All right, so he better start to weigh and measure and figure up the grand total pretty fast instead of sitting on the fence and keeping everybody else's life on hold. Dixie, the guy's stalling like crazy. No, if anybody is stalling, it's me. I'm in no rush for Tad to make up his mind. You mean you're willing to just sit around and wait forever? As long as Tad doesn't make a decision, I can pretend that he might still choose me. But in the end, I know he's going to stay with Brooke. Haley, do you have news about my father? Yes, but I'm afraid it's not very good. Just tell me everything and do not leave anything out. Well, I flew to L.A. and I met with Fields' agent, Mo Green. Uh, most of his client roster looks like something out of Forest Lawn. I mean, Mo himself was pretty much in a bourbon fog the entire time we spoke. But he remembered my father. Yes, Kendall. He remembered the movies and the premieres and... I'm very sorry, Kendall, but... Go on, just to say it. Richard Fields had a weakness for young girls. Seeing the younger the flesh, the more of it your father liked to see. You mean he was famous for dating younger women? Infamous is the word I would use. And younger women, no. Jailbait, yes. I believe that Mo told me the youngest was 10 or 12. And then there was a huge scandal involving a very underage daughter of a big studio exec, and that's when Fields' career dried up and he disappeared. But you found him. Against Mo's advice, yes, I uh, thought I could take care of myself, and I found your father living in a retirement home in Pasadena. I should have listened to Mo. Look, Haley, don't sugarcoat it. I can take it. Just tell me. Well, already knowing that he had raped Erica, I figured it would do me no good to go there with any prefab notions. I mean, what could it hurt to be friendly? So there we were in the recreation room. Ha <laughs> ha. Kendall, your father was all smiles. And then he was all hands. And in an instant, it was as if he'd dropped 20 years. The more I resisted, the more he persisted. And he was rubbing up against me and trying to force me down on the couch. And I told him to stop and take his hands off me, and that seemed to excite him even more. He called me his little spitfire and told me that it had been too long since he had wrapped his lips around a Shirley Temple. 
and that he wanted me to go back to his room, but we couldn't do that because his roomie was there and that he would settle for a big wet one. That's when my adrenaline kicked in and I beat my retreat. And when I looked back, Kendall, he was still smiling. The entire time he smiled, a big, phony, porcelain, Hollywood smile. I am so sorry, Kendall. No, no, it's okay. I was prepared for the worst. I know that it still must hurt. No, it's a relief. But the torture was just not knowing. My trip to California will just be a formality now. Kendall, are you sure you still want to go? I mean, knowing everything? I need to confront him with what he's done to Erica, to Dimitri, to me. Then I can just finally turn my back on all this. It's what we talked about. Uh, only if you're sure it's what you want. It's not what I want. It's what I have to do. Thanks for all your trouble, Haley. No problem. Kendall, are you sure you're really okay? Oh, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Excuse me. So I can get all the creature comforts, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Listen, I want to I wanna thank you for all your good words out there and for standing up against Tanner, and I want to apologize again for thinking you ever ordered... Forget it about it. Style. Forget about thinking. it. Right now, we've got to concentrate on turning around the Vox Populi here. Derek and Tanner, all they can see is Laurel's big, fat motive for killing Yes, him. yes, which is why I decided to dump the body. Now you see why. I knew how this was going to play out, Trevor. If it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it must be a duck, huh? Dead duck. Yeah, which means our goose is cooked. Look, I know it looks bad from here, Jack, but I'm not <laughs> handing you over to Tanner yet. There's more to this story. Trevor, there's not any more to this story. Laurel and I have told you everything. More than you know, more than maybe I know. I just asked Cannon to pull Denny's post-mortem. Denny's post-mortem? Why? I don't know. <laughs> asked the hairs on the back of my neck. They just stood up and saluted when I reread Laurel's account of his attitude and his behavior. Look, I'm going to talk to the, uh, the tenants. Yeah. All possible witnesses, anybody who could have heard anything, seen anything that Great. would clear up the cobwebs. Uh, sounds like a bit of a long shot, but thanks. Hey, I'd be worse, pal. We'll get you out of this. Think of it as a present for you and the new missus, huh? Trevor. I think Livia was absolutely right. I think you're going to make a hell of a lawyer. Thanks again. I understand you want to... You want to hold on to every moment alone you have with Tad. I mean, you love the guy. But what makes you so sure that he's going to stick with Brooke? Oh, I was just thinking. Every time that he must see me and Junior together, I mean, that child who is caught between his parents, that could be Jamie. Oh, Dixie Tad and Brooke splitting up wouldn't be anything like you and Adam. Well, any way you look at it, Brian, a divorce, it, it's terrible. I mean, theirs might be m more polite, but it's hell on the children. And I know he wouldn't... He would do anything to keep Jamie from getting hurt. And it's not just his son. It, it's Brooke, you know? He loves her. He loves his wife. Well, Tad loves you, too. I guess. I mean... Uh... It's very complicated. It's difficult. It's one of those situations where I... He loves her and he loves me. I, I, they say that that doesn't happen, but, you know, I've been there. I, I loved you and I loved Dad at the same time. I just thought I was going to kill myself before I decided which man I would choose. But you did it. Dixie, you left me. What makes you think that Tad won't leave Brooke? Because you weren't Junior's father. I could leave you without losing my son.
ever notice that no matter what we start talking about, we always come back to us? To this family, to Jamie? You and Jamie are my whole life. So, <clears throat> where did uh, my mother take my son and heir today? <laughs> she took them to the zoo. <laughs> you know what? Your mother's a real peach. I bet you're surprised. I bet you thought you'd never hear me say that about her. You two generally get along, don't you? Well, she could have lobbed hand grenades at our wedding instead of rice. But you know what? She's come around. As a matter of fact, just this morning we had a talk and you know what she told me? No. She told me that you love me. You uh, couldn't take my word for it. You had to ask her. Sometimes it means more when it comes from somebody else. Especially somebody like Opal. It's very sweet. Really, she's sort of rooting for us. Well, if my mother's blessing means that much to you, then it means... A lot to me, too. This is so crazy. <laughs> I mean, it really is crazy. I was on the verge of tears before you came in the door, and now I <laughs> can't stop smiling. I'm glad. So, <clears throat> what should we do? Um, your mom and the kids aren't going to be back from the zoo for hours. Is there something that I can do to make you smile? How you doing? Anything I can get you? Magazines? Cake with a file in it? Huh. Um, how's Jack? Ah, you married a brick. He's holding up fine. Trevor, I got no right to ask for a favor. Go ahead, ask. Could you call Lily's school and find out how she is, just if she's okay? Done. Next. Just tell me you think we got a chance to beat this. I told Jack this, and I'm going to tell you, too. I'm battling this baby with both barrels. But I need all the ammo I can get. Now, you. I need you to run the night in question by me again. Especially with regards to Denny's attitude, his behavior, his nutsoid attitude. Was he into drugs? Oh, no. Denny didn't even take aspirin. Not while we were married. Um, but that night, he was so... He was so hyper and so manic. You said that he smashed you around. Did anybody see the results of that besides Jack? No, I covered it up with makeup. Wait a minute. Before I had a chance to do that, Haley came over. Did she see the bruises? Yeah, she asked me about my eye, and I made up something about running into a doorknob. Well, Haley, you certainly earned your P.I. straps. I don't care much about that. I'm just, uh... You see, it was too much for Kendall. No, I, I thought she handled it all rather well. Yeah, surprisingly well. I remember that same dull look I had in my own eyes. It's called denial. Before AA, friends used to tell me that I was a drunk, and I didn't believe them. Kendall's not going to believe one word anyone says about her dear old dad until she sees it for herself up close and personal. And by then, she's going to blow. I'll be there to cushion it for her. It won't matter. I, I remember when I found out that Adam was my father, you would have thought that... You would have thought that I was the spawn of Hitler. And Adam is nowhere near as bad as... that subhuman feels. I'm telling you. When Kendall looks into those watery eyes and realizes that she is one half Richard Fields, rapist extraordinaire, she's going to lose total control. Kendall. Please go away. 
Let me help you. You can't. No one can. I heard what you said about your father. Could you be true? He can't be the monster that everyone says he is. Kendall, I'm sorry. Just tell me, what can I do? Nothing. Exactly what I should have done, nothing. I should have just... I should have just left well enough alone. Kendall? It's all right. It's all right. Believe me, I understand. Something that feels familiar. So, what's next on the agenda? Hmm? You know what I want to do? What? I want to surprise Jamie at the zoo. Right now? Yeah. I missed out on a lot of the good kid stuff in the first two years of his life, and I'd like to be there the first time he hears a, a, a lion roar. I can't think of anything better than being able to see the, the world through his eyes with you by my side. I mean, that's what families do best, don't they? You know what? I can't think of a more perfect way to spend the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Fine. I know it. I can just feel it. <laughs> 